veil over those two on the outside here as Kurt Busch looks to the inside. Should have the advantage down into turn one. Biffle in the 16 looked like for a second he wanted to make it three wide into turn one. He decided to do a little different. He's side by side for second place. Blaney led that lap by less than a thousandth of a second over Kurt Busch. Whoa, trouble down here. Turn four. Up, up, up. Nemechek. Saved it. Good job, Joe. We Coming stay inside. green. Coming inside. Get it back up. And he was running in the ninth position. He's going to go all the way to the back, but he's lucky he didn't hit the wall. Well, John, he got clear. Get your rhythm back. If he got any help getting down there or not. It's only outside of Tony, and I think, yeah, they brush. Oh, that's a whole lot of yeah. slideways for Nemechek. That's about as much as you can slide and not go ahead and spin out or hit the wall. That was a great save. Good job, Joe. Meanwhile, Mark Martin has come back into the race after a stay in the garage. Here's Matt. Jack, you've had a chance to take a look at the engine. What's wrong? Well, we're not sure. Looks like it broke the head off a valve. The valve spring's okay. Retainer's okay. The push rod was unhooked from the rocker arm. We've disabled the cylinder, took the push rod out, uh, took the spark plug out. We'll see how long it'll run. If it doesn't have too many parts floating around, it might be able to make minimum speed. Thanks, Jack. Thank you. Now, Doug Richard, Greg Biffle's crew chief, also notified him of the problem that's taken uh, Mark Martin out of winning this race. Told him to be careful with his engine. Don't over abuse it. Now, the reason they take the spark plug out is to relieve the pressure in that cylinder. The valve is not opening, so it can't do its normal thing. So you take the plug out, it runs around here. It sounds like an old John Deere tractor, but uh, it'll run that way. It just kind of freewheels. Here comes Jimmy Johnson pulling down on Ryan Newman. This is for fourth place. Johnson just made a bold move to take fourth, and I don't think he's done yet. It's like every pit stop. Chad Knauss, his crew chief and that team, they make this car better. I mean, he's right around the bottom. He's able to pick the throttle up and drive off the corner and stay in it. Let's get an update from Steve on what happened between Tony Stewart and Joe Nemechek. Well, Mike, I have not heard anything out of Tony Stewart, but I sure have out of Joe Nemechek. He feels like Stewart did that on purpose as a retaliation for the incident earlier when the 0-1 got into the back of the 20 car and dented his rear bumper. I don't know, man. That's, I don't know about that one, Steve. That's questionable, but let me tell you what it did do. It has hurt the performance of that 20 car because he is falling back through the field now, and you damage the right front fender, uh, you lose an incredible amount of downforce. And they're back together again, battling for 16th position. They're not cutting each other any slack, I can tell you that. Steve, the overhead view uh, showed that Joe might have been coming down the corner. It looked a little more like Tony held his ground. We just call it a racing incident. Casey Kane out of the race. Here's Matt. Casey, the crew's trying to fix the race car. What happened? Uh, we were just, we were junk. Um, we were trying to change it. We came in, worked on it, and uh, didn't, didn't make it any better right there. We made it worse. Uh, running two seconds off the pace and still crashed. So, I don't know. I feel bad. I wish uh, we could run a little better at uh, the UAW 400. Right now, Casey in the garage is 15 laps down. In seven more laps, Mark Martin would pass him. And as we keep talking about, five points is so precious right now in this chase for the cup. Even three points finishing way back there. Well, I think, Larry, that's one of the things we've picked up on, and the teams have too, is we're not running a 36 race schedule. We're running 26 right now. So you've got to think 26 races and you got to get points everywhere you can. If it means staying out leading under caution or if it means fixing it and getting back out there and running a few laps. We have tied the record for caution flags in a Las Vegas oh, Nextel right. yes, Cup race. Good. Here's how He's the back. leaders came onto pit road. Kurt Busch was the leader. Jimmy Johnson second. Greg Biffle third. Ryan Newman fourth entering the pits. Pretty standard service for the Roush cars. Uh, one chassis adjustment in the right rear biffle. You have to keep making chassis adjustments to keep up with this racetrack. But there you see the 97 car, Kurt Busch, led by Jimmy Finney. They maintain, pick up that one position right there. You can see the real loser, though, Jimmy Johnson in the 48 car. 
positions gained and lost off pit road. But I'm going to tell you who the weird, real winner was on that caution. Matt Kenseth in the 17. He is now back on the lead lap. And now you go through a series of uh, runs here and uh, another caution comes out and you get your track position back and you're in position to win the race. It's not that many laps ago. He was two laps down after making an unscheduled stop for a tire run. This is Travis Quaffle's stop. Oh boy. I get the impression that he nut. felt like he did not have a lug nut on the right front. Again, you cannot leave the pit box until you have all the lug nuts on. Almost disaster there, Jeannie. Yeah, Larry Mack, you are exactly right. That was the thought process that the lug nut wasn't completely on on that right front. Obviously, miscommunication as front tire changer Clay Robinson made his way back around the car. Travis, unaware, when he looked up, you saw the near disaster there. And as Travis pulled away, he said, geez, sorry. But that's not Travis's fault. If it was not communicated to him to hold up, Travis's indication to leave is when that jack drops. He's supposed to go. Seven. Getting Good. set for the restart at 129 laps. Be a good time to uh, stack up those speakers and use that Dolby surround sound. Take advantage of your high def picture. How about if we do it for the troops overseas? Let's crank it up. Greg Biffle has moved to second, displacing Ryan Newman. So it's the Roush Forge 1 2, a Penske Dodge in third, and a Hendrick Chevy fourth. Seeing Biffle and Bush at the front, it's just again, it's reminiscent of two weeks ago in Fontana when they were the two cars that at the end of the day were up there fighting for the win. But I tell you who's going to be fighting with them, that man racing for third right now, Jimmy Johnson in the 48 car. He just keeps on a coming. Yeah, well, think about again, Fontana, he came on there late in the race and uh, spoiled the one-two finish, got in between them. I tell you, the turnaround of the day, I believe, is Elliott Sadler in that 38 car. Now, he's not running in the fifth position right there. He's a lap down. But should he get a caution like Matt Kinson did a while ago, he would get the free pass back on the lead lap. So we're back under green. Kurt Busch out of front by about six car lengths under, over Greg Biffle. Jimmy Johnson is third. Well, Ryan Newman is fourth. Scott Riggs a strong fifth. Then Harvick, Blaney, Jeff Gordon, Nemechek, and Hamilton, let's update pit stops. Let's start with Matt. Kurt Busch, first car off pit road, first car off pit road. He told crew chief Jimmy Finning that he just needed one small adjustment. He was just a hair loose that he, that entire run, a 14.3 second pit stop. They made a wedge adjustment. He is motoring away out front. Steve? Well, Matt, Greg Biffle said his car was just a little bit free getting into the corners. So as Mike Joy noted, they made an adjustment on the left rear jack screw and the track bar. Dick Bergeron. Well, Jimmy Johnson came into the pits in second position. He entered the racetrack in fifth position. Now, that was a bit because he was tentative exiting his pit. As he got ready to leave the pit, a whole pile of cars showed up, and he just wanted to make very sure he didn't touch any of them. He surely remembered last year when he got into an altercation on pit road, damaged the right front fender, and that was the end of his day. But this time, when Johnson got back on the racetrack again in fifth spot, he keyed his radio and told the crew, victory lane is waiting for them.
See, Dave Blaney in the 07 car, Philippe Lopez decided to cha change four tires that last stop. He's battling there with Jeff Gordon. This is a battle for the seventh position. But just to talk about how strong that 48 car is, we're halfway through this race. Jimmy Johnson, and he just ran the fastest lap about three laps ago that he's ran this entire race. We just crossed halfway in the UAW Daimler Chrysler 400 at Las Vegas. Capacity crowd. Track owner Bruton Smith saying in a press conference this morning they were going to add more permanent seats uh, down in turn one to accommodate the demand. You know, Larry, I think the 38 car, Elias Sadler, is a perfect example of a car that he could not drive in the beginning of this race. Got in trouble, got behind, couldn't drive it. Dog meat, what are we going to do? They worked on it, worked on it, worked on it, and now look where he is. One of the fastest cars on the racetrack with a shot at getting himself back on the lead lap. New second place car, Jimmy Johnson, came off turn four, put the move on Greg Biffle. Biffle trying to return the favor here as Kurt Busch moves away from this pair. And Biffle in the 16, he got a really good run off turn two. Now look how far though Johnson in the 48 drives it down in there and the car sticking and he'll complete the pass in three and four. It started off a of turn two though. Before I see Jimmy's car really fast, Larry, is in the center of the turn. He mats that thing and really gets a leap up off of both corners. You go, guys, we talk about points, 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 and we know how important every point can be. When that wreck happened, Back on lap 12 with Dale Earnhardt Jr., Ricky Rudd, Bobby Labonte. Dale Earnhardt Jr. would be credited with the 40th place finish. Bobby Labonte, they worked for about 100 laps on his car. He went back out there and ran four laps just to be able to go by Dale Earnhardt Jr. Now Ricky Rudd is out there as well, 84 laps down. So that means Dale Earnhardt Jr. already loaded up, lost two positions in this race, which can mean about six or seven points. One thirty-eight complete. Four drivers: Kurt Busch and Greg Biffle, first and third. Chevy second and fifth, and Dodge with Ryan Newman fourth. That's Kurt Busch uh, leading Saturday after a qualifying practice. He said we're going to roll the dice, play a little Yahtzee, playing with the house's money right now. And declare your citizenship to the biggest NASCAR show to hit the air. NASCAR Nation. It's on Speed Channel. Special features like Beyond the Wheel, Home Base, The Big Story. NASCAR fans now can stay closer than ever to America's biggest motorsports. Don't miss NASCAR Nation this week on Speed. If you don't get the Speed Channel, call 1-888-22-SPEED. It's a show that takes you behind the scenes. You get to meet the drivers. For example, this week, Bobby Hamilton, the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series champ, has the story of him living in his car before working his way up to the NASCAR Cup Series and becoming a successful driver. With Jeff Hamill, Chris Myers back here and getting a look at some of the cars motoring around the track. Yeah, right now we're watching a pretty good battle between Greg Biffle and uh, Ryan Newman. They're fighting uh, the third and fourth spot, and uh, Newman is just taking that over away from Greg Biffle. All right, Matt Kenseth, who went two laps down, had some problems earlier, is now back on the lead lap, and also Travis Quabble, the rookie, who is a 65-1 to shot, if you're betting in Vegas, part of the field, also is working his way back up. Yeah, both these guys right now, Matt's uh, trying to work his way underneath Rusty Wallace, now working himself back up into the top 20. But uh, it's a good recovery right now because these guys... Uh, we're two laps down, and if you take a look all of a sudden out of the corner of our screen, you'll see Jimmy Johnson. He is closing in real quick on the 97 car, Kirk Busch. Again, he's been getting stronger as the day goes on. And being just past the halfway point, this is when the cream kind of starts to rise to the top, and the guys are starting to figure out this racetrack. Hey, business is getting ready to pick up. Jimmy Johnson at his fourth Las Vegas Cup race, best finish sixth, and guys like Casey Kane.